Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content and featuring today a rental team from one of you fine people. Um, Jude actually was kind enough last week in the comment section to suggest a team that they'd been playing um, and to a lot of success as well, actually managing to get number one rank in Series 9, which was the last series the lad has obviously just updated. So this team's pretty powerful powerful as you can see from the concept here it is a colossal team and you know in two ways it's really great because we haven't really featured gmax colossal for a long time on the channel um and it's kind of nice to be able to feature that as well as having to feature a very successful team from one of you so if you do have rental teams that you'd like to see featured on the channel so there's a big shout out to everyone already um do put them down in the comment section let me know if you'd like to see them featured and uh, hit me up with a poker paste as well because a lot of people do do ask for the polka paste if we do feature our rental team so i'm putting the feelers out to you jude right now if you're watching this if you are able to share the paste it's fine if not some people don't like to share all the details uh, but if you can provide the polka paste i'm sure a lot of people will appreciate that and that goes for anyone providing rental teams in future obviously we've not got long left of uh, series nine i think the rules update in july right i'm pretty sure to series 10 so we'll have a new rule set I think it is. I will double check this and we'll reiterate in the next video. But yeah, we should have a new rule set, which will be very exciting, a bit fresh as well, because obviously we've played Series 9 before. Um, but we may have another month left. But if that's the case, then there's a lot more room for making teams and then featuring your teams as well. But with that said, we'll have a couple of games of the team now. We'll see how it pilots, see how we can get it working in this format where it's very difficult with, you know, everyone knows how popular Colossal is. And then we'll end up with a rental code at the end. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, friends. Do leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on GMAX Colossal. I would love to hear them. Negative, positive, whatever. It would be great to hear nonetheless. And uh, without further ado, we'll jump into our first match of today's episode. Okay, so first up today, we have a Spectre, Metagross, a Galarian, a Moltres, Incineroar, Rotom, Wash, and a Rillaboom team. So pretty solid team for us to kick off with today. Uh, you can see that the uh, the Spectre and Metagross combination going to be kind of present here. Probably a uh, weakness policy on the Metagross there with the Bulldoze, potentially from the Spectre, so that's something to kind of keep an eye out for. Uh, Galarian Moltres, not something we'd like particularly worry about. I think the thing to be more worried about than anything else in this team is probably going to be the Rotom, um, and you could imagine my opponent kind of leading off with that because it is difficult for us to kind of proc the um, the, the Berry, get Colossal going, and, and take down the Rotom in one kind of hit. You're relying on something like Rillaboom in those situations, so I think it's good to kind of keep that in mind where we could almost bait my opponent attacking into something like colossal turn one uh leading out with something like urshifu next to it um going rillaboom in the back and do we want as our last one like celesteela is pretty decent here you know uh the metagross gonna struggle to hit it uh rillaboom definitely won't appreciate going up against it um but then the spectra is not a bad option as well especially if we can remove the spectra but then it comes down to like if, if my opponent has like Incineroar and Moltres at the end, I don't know. I think Celestia probably is going to be the better one, even though Incineroar has a better matchup against um, Celestia, but it also has a decent matchup against Spectre as well. Um, we'll see. It's always interesting as well, you know. Uh, keep an eye out for Jude's comments. I'm sure he will comment at the end of this video to see and say how he maybe would have led into these matches. Uh, it's always good to have that other player's perspective, especially when the player has been piloting it, built it themselves and, and going from there. But we do see the Rotom come up from my opponent with the Spectre. Not Incineroar though, so I mean that's that's a plus for us. Um, we got a couple of options here. We could kind of just go after the Spectre, uh, get the rocks going and set up. Or... We could try, we could, like I say, we could try and get Rillaboom onto the field. The only issue here would be if the Spectre kind of attacks into it as well. Um, now, I don't know if they will. Like, one option we could have, like, I don't really want to allow Urshifu to get burned. So, that's maybe the, the reason why I would like to kind of protect here, get Rillaboom onto the field, will pressure that Rotom a little bit more. And then keep the, the Rillaboom kind of Urshifu combo for a late game. 
So let's see what my opponent does. If they double in a Rilla Boom, well, they, even if they double in a Rilla Boom, like we're fine. It's just we don't really want to be taking additional damage from the Spectre if, if unnecessarily needed to, you know. Um, but we'll take a Thunderbolt or a Hydro Pump pretty pretty easily. Okay, so the Rilla, the route I'm going for the going for the Protect and a Snarl coming out, which is fine. So. I think the big thing here is because the the Rotom now is so pressured from our side of the field, they're definitely going to switch it out, right? So we've got the opportunity to kind of go after um, the Spectria and kind of double up into that slot. Um, and I would even go Surgeon Strikes into there because I would expect maybe the Rotom to switch to something like Incineroar. Uh, and I think we'll be able to kind of remove the Spectra pretty easily. And once the Spectra is gone, uh, at least they're a big fast threat. Is kind of taken out of the game. There's always the issue as well, you know, uh, a Snarl and a Thunderbolt here from the Rotom into Urshifu could be pretty bad, but Rotom's so pressured, you kind of feel pretty comfortable at this point saying, yeah, it's going to it's gonna switch out. And uh, as you see, the, the, the Rillaboom making way here. So Shadow Ball coming out, it will be into um, will be into Rillaboom, but we should be able to take that pretty comfortably. Ah, I say comfortably. I mean, we take it pretty well. As uh, we'll get these surgeon strikes, it'd be nice to pick up the knockout. But I mean, we're going wood hammer into it anyway, so we're not going to take a bunch of recoil, which is always, which is always nice, the tiniest amount here, um, and we'll be able to pick up the knockout onto the horse, which is always good. Now we've got to worry about potential fake out this next turn um, from the opposing red boom that just hit the field, um, and that can kind of make a little bit of room for something like Rotom to come back in, maybe get a nasty plot off. So that's something we've got to keep in mind. And there's always the there's always the the, the kind of like attraction, I guess, if if the Rotom does come in where we max Rillaboom and just go uh G Max drum beating into that slot because we probably pick up the knockout, but then it kind of takes away uh the max turns from colossal and with solo health as well with rillaboom is it kind of worth it is there another way around where we can kind of still get that colossal going late game potentially you know uh the big thing for us here to to get colossal going is obviously to get rid of the the rotom as quick as possible but uh not seeing that just seeing the moltres hit the field which is um actually you know really makes things Quite appealing for us to to get Colossal back onto the field now, um, and maybe uh, we don't want to go for the Aqua Jet. We definitely don't. The big worry would be um, mm, Max Airstream from the Moltres, and that would kind of put the the stoppers on Urshifu being able to get the Aqua Jet onto um, Colossal this next turn because then. The Rillaboom would be would have the faster priority, so Grassy Glide would go before Aqua Jet, and um, also a Sash would be broken as well. But we're not going to see an air. Okay, an air slash into Urshifu. I wonder if they're going to get the double up and a U turn. Okay, yeah, they're doing a nice job of baiting the the the, uh, the Colossal back onto the field. But the big kind of thing for us here is we've got the Grassy Terrain active, so. Depending if Colossal's got a Grass Stab, we'd be able to take advantage of that and go into the Rotom. Um, but again, I think it's probably better to just go, if we go Max Colossal here, go for our Rocks into Moltres um, and start the Rocks. Yeah. Let's just do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get rid of this Moltres because even if the Rillaboom switches in here, it's kind of all right. The Moltres is pretty much the biggest threat to us now, though, I think, because if we lose Colossal early on. And, you know, the thing is, like, my opponent didn't, like, max with Rotom turn one as well. Like, you kind of expect them to maybe pull the trigger. But, you know, I think so many players are used to playing Colossal teams where it's like the cat and mouse game. Yeah. Okay, well gonna get the Rillaboom regardless let's see if the Rotom does attack here I mean I think it's a bit of a, a bad play if my opponent doesn't yeah they're gonna go for it yeah and they're gonna go after the, the Colossal so we will lose it but we'll start our rocks Urshifu still sitting pretty healthy
And we still got Celesila in the back as well. At this point, you're kind of thinking, mm, maybe Spectre would have been the better call, to be honest, but... Let's see. Let's see what happens. Because Celesteela isn't going to want to play play in front of a Rotom. That is for sure. So we're going to have to really rely on uh, Rillaboom to come in and kind of do the work there. But with the, 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 like, the residual damage from the rocks, I think Grassy Glide should put us in a good position to kind of uh, get rid of the Rotom the next turn. Um... But we'll see how this turn plays out. You never know what's going to happen. You do get the G-Max Falklith off, and that's always the kind of thing that you want to get off, even if we, uh, we do... Ooh, Rillaboom actually takes it pretty well. Okay. But, I mean, the residuals should take it down. And there's a geyser, so the rain going to be going up. It does make uh, our Urshifu a lot stronger as well, you know, against the Moltres. Um... So we'll potentially be able to pick up the Moltres the next turn with the, the Crit Surge and Strikes boosted by the rain. Uh, and then Rillaboom's in a, an amazing spot to kind of just take down take down the Rotom. Um, the residual damage, like I say, should take down the uh, the Rillaboom here. Yeah. Okay. And we still got the Sash on um, Urshifu as well. So if we take down the Moltres, we've got at least two two hits into the, um, into the Rotom. Have we just made a bit of a boo boo? I think by bringing um, by bringing Rillaboom in here, to be honest, because I think the grassy terrain is going to end soon. Yeah, and maybe really thinking about it, it probably would have been better to potentially keep Rillaboom and spend some time wasting turns with um, with Celesteela, kind of preoccupying the the, the Rotom here, but. We'll get a grassy glide off. It should do, yeah, I mean, considerable damage. And a close combat's going to pick up the knockout, even with the citrus berry uh, recovery. And like I say, Surgeon Strike should get the Moltres here. Should. We'll see. It's going to be very, very, very... Nah, we've got it, we've got it, we've got it, we've got it. I was going to say that first one didn't look very convincing, but uh, the three crits there with the rain boost, enough to get the Moltres, and uh, we've pretty much locked it, like I say, at this point. Um, Colossal not doing a massive amount of work, but doing enough, and the Sash there on Urshifu providing valuable. Now, we are losing our Grassy Train, like I've said. Not ideal, but I think a close combat is going to be enough to get the Rotom with the residual damage from the Colossal. So... Um, it feels pretty clean this first game. I think um, the, the I don't regret like Max and Colossal when when I did. So um, yeah, we'll switch out because we want that. We want that like guaranteed fallback if things go wrong, don't we? And uh, we'll lock into a close combat, and that should be enough to lock it. Should be. So Celestia are gonna make a cameo appearance here. It's a nice shiny one as well. Very nice, very nice. Do you like shiny Celesteela? Oh, and it's just enough, yeah. And a crit there, so maybe, maybe, maybe that edged it, but I don't know. Probably did, probably did. Very good game to my opponent, though. And a, a really nice one for us to kick off with today, because it it's always tricky, you know, um, playing Colossal. And um, especially because, like I've said at the start of the video, everyone's aware of the Colossal team, you know, you've got... Big shout out to Wolf there in Players Cup 2. And, you know, even going back before then, Colossal, G-Max Colossal being such a powerful archetype, you know, throughout um, the, the Sword and Siege Shield series. So uh, people know what to expect from it. So it's always going to be harder to kind of play it. And it still performs very well. So just really testament to the archetype. But with that, friends, good game to our first opponent. We'll jump into our second match of today. Okay, next up today we have an Araquanid, uh, our creamy Cinderace, Colossal, Landorus, Therian, and Dragapult. So we got a bit of a mirror with the uh, the Colossal there, but doesn't look kind of like your kind of standard Colossal team. Uh, you're obviously going to have the Dragapult as the way to probably proc the Colossal on my opponent's side of the field. Um, and then with the Araquanid, it's kind of interesting. There's no real trick room mode to the team. It's apparent. So there's lots of airstream options, obviously, with the Dragapult, uh, Landorus, Cinderace potentially. And then you've got the, the Decorate from Alcremie as well, which is going to be a little bit uh, disruptive, to say the least. Um, 
Dragapult Colossal. I mean, it feels like a, a mode that we could just go run with, you know? A Rackman, it doesn't scare me as much as something like Rotom would because, you know, we can hit it for, like, super effective damage with the uh, G-Max Volcalith. Um, Landorus scares me a little bit. Of course, I think you've always got to be a little bit worried about Landorus. Um, Urshifu makes a lot of sense here. It helps us out with a bunch of things. Clean the Colossal, the Cinderace, Landorus. Um... So what's our last Pokemon? Maybe Spectra here. Maybe Spectra. Spectra is really quite a decent option. The other one would be Rillaboom, I think. Um, just the priority, I think. Late game could come in handy. But then again, I think Spectra could be quite a nice Pokemon just to bring in in the late game and kind of help us sweep up if we need to. Um, and if we're in a, a real kind of bad spot, Spectra is always a kind of a Pokemon you can pretty reliably kind of rely on. Um... It's just pumping out damage when and as you need it, you know. So, see what my opponent does. I wouldn't be surprised to see them lead Dragapult Colossal, to be honest. Yeah. It makes me think as well, you know. Do we actually... Nah, we have to go for the Surf, don't we? Kind of have to Surf. The other option is we don't Surf, you know. Um, and allow them to kind of Surf for us. Whereas if we could potentially just help in hand... Uh, hope that they're gonna go for the serve, proc everything, and then we go G Max Volklith into the opposing Colossal and a helping hand boost on top of the weakness policy. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of presuming a lot of things here are gonna happen, but uh, oh, you never, you never know. Lander is coming in, okay? Well, we're not getting the um. We are not getting the uh, the steam engine. It doesn't look like it here anyway, unless the uh, the Dragapult, Draggy Dragapult, going for that Max Max Geyser, I reckon. Did we get a little bit greedy? Maybe. Is the Max Geyser going to be enough to take us down? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I feel like it might not be. I'm curious, I'm curious, because normally when you got Dragapult, right, especially in a Colossal team, unless it's a total bluff, they're, they're jolly min special attack investment, min IV special attack, so you've got to think, we should be able to take it, but they may not even go for it at all, you know, just going for the Phantasm, yeah, I want to get rid of our Dragapult, which is fine. Because <clears throat> we got Urshifu, so it's not like a terrible situation. Like the return here for losing Dragapult isn't great, but the fact is that they're not maxing their Colossal either, makes it a little bit easier for us. Now, the Landorus obviously uh, not going to be going down this turn, and <sighs> does make it a little bit trickier with where we go, like. Oh, Spectra probably would have been the better one to bring in here, honestly, rather than like concentrating down on getting our weakness policy proc. I mean, this turn, what we could potentially do is just Aqua Jet into the Landorus. Um, and we could go for Max. We could Max Quake. I don't really feel like it's going to do us that much good. Uh, we could Max Flare. It makes the Aqua Jet less weak and then makes the uh, us able to take a, um, a Flare and Aqua Jet the next turn a lot better. Because you've got to think with the Max Phantasm low on our defense, it's going to make it even more difficult <clears throat> taking these attacks. Uh, especially for minus two if they go for another Max Phantasm here. Whereas if we get the Max Flare up, it means that there's a little bit of stability uh, with that as we see the Airstream come out. Which is fine, that'll take us... No, it doesn't even take us down to our sash. So, uh, the max flare, it's not going to do very much to Dragapult, but it's a kind of a means to an end for us. Um, and it does allow us to get the sun up, which kind of helps us out for a late game, I guess, if we, uh, once we're not maxed in a decent spot with Colossal. Because I was expecting maybe the Phantasm there, just to keep lowering that defense. Because I think if you're my opponent, you're thinking about what we're going to do to set up, potentially. You kind of want to be spiking that, like, or lowering the um, the defense stat, so you're getting the most out of us kind of attacking ourselves. 
But we remove the Landorus instead, which is always worthwhile. Now I don't really worry too much about um, the Dragapult here. We'll just go for the Volklith into uh, into Cinderace. We'll proc our um, Steam Engine, and it feels very close to being over at this point. I think. I think anyway. Pending. Lots. Ah, uh, well, uh, yeah. I mean, only thing that would worry me there maybe Sucker Punch, but then. It's not going to be enough, is it, from, I don't think, even at the range that we are, to take us down from Cinderace. Maybe, 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 Life Orb, Sucker Punch, could have done the job. Probably could have, though, to be, to be honest. So we'll get the Cinderace. That's gone, and Dragapult's going to be pretty easy to handle after this. Especially with what we've got left. You know, Spectre in the back. They have got an Airstream, though, so that does uh, complicate things slightly. As a Max Phantom, and another one comes out um, into Ocean Fu. Uh, and that's the last turn of our Maxes for our Pokemon. But I think getting the sun up like we have done probably, probably helped us a lot more in the long run. Uh, Inspector to come in. I mean, even Rillaboom in this situation. Oh, yeah, we've got the Poison Colossal to think about as well. It's not just the Dragapult. Okay. So, not that straightforward, but not terrible as well at the same time. Um, so what's Gloss got? Has it got like, has it got Earth Power? Earth Power, I think. And we don't have Protect. Okay, Shadow Ball and uh, what is it? What is it? It's High Horsepower. Ooh, very nice. And we're physical. Oh, that's even better. Because we can just Rock Slide now. That probably gets the Dragapult. I didn't even know until now that we were physical. I should have been paying way more attention. I love the physical. Oh, hit the physical. Hit the Dragapult, please. It's the wrong one. <laughs> Come on. Come on. There, there we go. We've probably lost this now. Physical one sucks. Okay, Phantom Force. Get away with that a little bit, I guess. Uh, but our defense stat gone. Shadow Ball Avoidant, flinched. We are so, so lucky here. We are so, so lucky. We Shadow Ball Dragapult, and we have to Rock Slide again. And we have to hope that this Rock Slide is enough. Okay, we do hit. That's good. This should be enough. We get so lucky with that flinch. I'm not even kidding how lucky we got. Phantom Force, if it's into Colossal, we probably go down. Um, but it's into, uh, yeah, okay. Oh. I love Rock Slide, but I also hate Rock Slide as well at the same time, you know? It's just one of those moves that uh, never like to rely on. Um, but we'll, we'll go for a reliable Flare Blitz here, and um, that should be enough to do the job on this Dragapult, which has done pretty well in this match, to be honest. And um, it's kept pace with Colossal and uh, we get lucky with it with a rare flinch there and um, manage to take down my opponent there and make this two wins for two so Jude I hope you're happy with today's matches it'd be great to hear your uh, feedback from today's games thank you so much again for the team uh, good game to my opponent today and uh, we'll hop over now and remind you all of the rental code for this GMAX Colossal team so here you go friends here is Jude's rental team from today's episode I hope if you do try it out you have a lot of fun with it GMAX Colossal you know it's one of those Pokemon a bit like Marmite you love it or you hate it and I think if you do love it you should definitely give this team a try and even if you hate it hate's a strong word give 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 Colossal a little chance give it a chance it's a good Pokemon and it's it is it's consistently good this archetype consistently good I like the in, in the, the inclusion of a Celesteela in this team I think that with the Spectria is a really nice option and you kind of normally see things like Moltres in here um the Galarian Moltres but I think the inclusion of those two alone gives the team a lot of different dynamics to work with obviously you've got the key components to making Colossal work and the Rillaboom the Ursha through the Dragapult which we've predominantly seen today but we have had glimpses of um of the other two Pokemon as well so it's been quite nice 
all in all uh, so i hope you have enjoyed it definitely leave your comments down below if you do give the team a try and uh, give jude a big shout out for the team as well like i mentioned at the start of the video if you've got rentals you'd like to see featured on these uh, on the channel on videos going forward do let me know and uh, i'll make sure to feature them going forward but we're going to wrap things up there not to keep this video too long friends thank you so much for tuning in as always we'll be back with more content very soon on the channel so keep an eye out for that uh and whatever you do make sure you're taking care of yourself so until next time friends Take care and bye-bye.